if you see on it, obviously today is a flex day. We're not learning anything new today. We are reviewing some um, concepts that we briefly touched upon in lesson 11 and lesson 12. So we're talking about no solutions and infinitely many solutions today. So we have our learning target for today. Our learning target for today is that we can, let me just, I wanna just sort of pin myself. Um, I can use graphs to find an ordered pair that two real world situations have in common. Okay, so that's what our goal is for today. We're using graphs to find ordered pairs that two have in common. Okay, and we're going to focus specifically on this idea, this concept of no solutions versus infinitely many solutions. Okay, so the first piece that we're going to look at for today is Elena and Jada. Okay, so Elena and Jada are in a 100 meter bike race and they both start at the same time at the same spot and they're riding at a constant speed. So we're different from those bugs that we were talking about the other day because we're starting at the same spot and they're moving at a constant speed. I mean, well, the bugs were moving at a constant speed as well, but really we're different from the bugs because we're starting in the same spot. Okay, this table right here gives you information about Jada's bike ride. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because I'm, we're going to use this on the next slide and I don't want to have to keep flipping back and forth. So we're going to come down to slide number four because slide number four asks us to do the following. It asks us to graph the relationship between the distance and time in Jada's bike race. Be sure to label and scale your, your axes appropriately. So I labeled and scaled our axes for us. We just need to plot some points on our graphs. So we need to take a look at, this is Jada's distances and times. So if I wanna plot some of these points here, Yeah, so the so the constant rate of speed is so the six is is the times six, Kaylee B, and then the nine is the times nine, right? The time nine. So what are you multiplying both of those by? The six and the nine by what? So what's your constant rate of speed? If you're multiplying by that number every time. That's your constant rate of speed. Does that make sense, Kayla B? Okay, so let's talk about it. So we need to first, before we even talk about our CROC, our constant rate of speed, let's first plot some points. I need to plot Jada's distances and times on this graph. So if I look at her first line in this table, the first row in this table, and I grab one of my points off the pile, how am I going to get there on my grid? Let's see, can I have, let's see who I'm gonna have help me. Um, I don't think birthday Carter is in. Oh, he is in. Carter, your, your name is just Carter today, silly Billy. Um, Carter, can I have you on mute? And can you tell me, how am I gonna get to that point? 636, a time of six and a distance of 36. How am I gonna get there? You'll go up 36 and go across six. Very good. So I'm going to go, he did it, he said it back, but yes, it still works. Very good. Um, it would go over six and up to the 36. Very good, um, Christmas Carter. So you're, <laughs> I'm literally just going to call you Christmas Carter. <laughs> Sorry, Carter. Um, <laughs> That just makes me laugh every time though, Carter. <laughs> okay, so you're going to go over to the six, up to the 36. Very good. And you're going to drop your point. Nice job. Then I want to plot my second point here of the nine and the 54. Nine seconds and the 54 meters. How am I going to get there? Let's see. Um, go over a nine and up 54. Very good, Alyssa Button. So I'm going to grab a point off my pile. I'm going to go over to the nine and the up to the 54. Nice job. Boom. 
And then now what do I have to, yes. So then Jaden Ramos, you can unmute and tell me, what do I have to do to now create an equation line? What do I have to do? So I don't need to, I'm not actually writing an equation. I want to, I have these points on my grid here. What do I have to do? Yes, add the line. Exactly. Nice job, Jane and Ramos. So where am I going to put my point? Like where, where, where like this line, where am I going to line it up with? Nice job. So you could you line it up with one of your points and Jaden said specifically he chose the 954 and then you're going to grab the end of it and you're going to extend it through that point. That other point that you wrote there. Right. And you can also sort of grab it and extend it up this way if you want. Boom. So I have this equation for Jada. It goes through the origin, right? So what does that mean? What type of relationship is it? Proportional. Yes, woo! And Jaden got that as well. Nice job. It's a proportional relationship. It goes through zero, zero. It is proportional. That was Alyssa Button that said that, right? Yeah. Yes, Alyssa Button. Nice job. And Jaden Ramos. Um, I just labeled this guy as Jada because I personally, I don't know. I just like to label them. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, label it, but I just did. Okay. So we just, <laughs> Kaylee V said her favorite math word is proportional. <laughs> I love it. High five, Kaylee B. But oop, mine is two. Oh, that was you? Oh, Avery, you said proportional? Did Alyssa Bunn steal your thunder? Alyssa, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> the disrespect. <laughs> Avery, I love it. Alyssa Bunn, stealing people's thunder. Ooh, girl, she's vicious. Watch out for Alyssa Bunn. Ooh. <laughs> yes, Kaylee B, virtual high five. Um, I love it. Okay, that just made my life, guys. That was a great exchange. So we just graphed, oh my gosh, we just graphed Jada's distances, right? So now let's take a look at Elena's distances. And Elena travels, very good. Um, Elena traveled the entire race at a steady six meters per second at the same set of axes. on the same set of axes. We're going to graph the relationship between Elena's distance and time. So <laughs> Kaylee V knows, Kaylee V knows delicious fishes. <laughs> so we need to graph Elena's distances on this guy as well. So we need to calculate some points that would be represented by Elena's traveling. So where is Elena even cuz it, it we're start we're talking about a race here and when you when you talk about a race we both start where at the same point which is usually your starting line, right? So we're saying that they're starting at the same point which is our starting line. So where is Elena's line also going to start? Where on my grid is Elena's line gonna start? So at zero seconds, how far is she gonna be? Not, not quite there, Avery. That might be one of her points, but we wanna think about where is she starting her race? She's starting at zero meters, very good. Nice job, Bridget, Avery, Jaden, and Avery. Very good on that. She's starting at that same point that Elaine, that Jada is starting at, that zero, zero, because that's where you start a race. You start a race at zero, zero, okay? So on your grid, on your graph, you're gonna wanna put a point at zero, zero for Elena, okay? And then once we have Elena's first point down, she's moving at a constant rate of six meters per second. So if I grab another point and I want to extend her line, I'm going to go over one second and up how many? 
Very good, Jaden Ramos. Go ahead, guys, tell me, where, where is it gonna be? For every one second that she rides her bike, how many meters does it add? Looking at her description on number two. Very good, Bridget. So for every one meter she rides or for, she rides her bike, she's gonna go up six meters. So, ooh, look at that, that point. What does that point look like to you? What do we notice about that point? All right, hello, Leah. What do we notice about that point, guys? That one we just plotted down here below this orange line here. It's going up, it intersects. Very good. It might, something about the slope, it might have the same slope, I don't know. Let's extend her line one more to see what happens. So she still is moving at six meters for every second. So for every second she goes over, we're gonna go up how many meters? Six more meters, right? So I have three points that fall on Elena's line. So what can I do with those three points? What do I have to do? I have to make a slope or I have to put my, I have to connect them using my line. So I grab that blue line, I line it up with my origin and I'm going to connect it through those three points that I just plotted here, one, two. And what do we notice about that line here, people? They overlap. They overlap, right? So if they overlap like that, that must mean that they're both going how fast? How fast is each person going? Very good. Yes, Jaden Ramos, six meters per second. Very good. Very good, Bridget. They're both going at six meters per second. So if we're trying to figure out in the context of this story, who is gonna win the race, who's gonna win the race? Nobody. If Tie. nobody's gonna win, it's gonna be a? Tie. A tie, yes, Jaden Ramos, yes, Avery, very good. It's gonna be a tie, very good. And, and Jaden Ramos put a, an emoji of a tie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever, Jaden Ramos. I love it. Um, so who won? No one's going to win. It will be a tie. I have to fix that. No one. Just give me a second. No one will win. It will a tie. So um, just one thing I want to say before we move forward. Um, welcome, Aaliyah. We are in our slideshow for today. Obviously, you can see we're on slide number four. If you didn't get everything copied down, Aaliyah, that's okay. Um, we're just going to jump in with the next activity with us, okay? So we looked at this guy here. We noticed that these two lines fell directly on top of one another. And go ahead. Um, I was going to ask her when you place the dot, um, when you dig a rung of one and a rise of six, is that for because you're going six meters for one second? Yes. And so the reason that I only raised it one box is because the scale on this graph here is six, right? So the distance is six. So I went up six meters, which was only one line, and then over one second because this is labeled one. Does that make sense, guys? Why the 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 um the 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 speed was six meters per second, but because this is scaled by sixes, we only went up one box. Does that make sense, you guys? Perfect. Okay, so nobody won this race. It was a tie because they're just that good. Okay, nice. That was a good question there, Alyssa Button. Thank you for asking it. <laughs> You're so sneaky. I love it. Ah. <laughs> I know, right? I bet they did argue because I would be like, nah, yo, Jada, I won this thing. I won. Get out of here. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Okay. So now we're going to move on to stacks of cups, which I think that you guys will have a little bit easier of a time with just because we're given two equations here. So like we're given an equation and we just have to graph the equation. So if we're looking at this this, a stack of n small cups has a height h of h, uh, a height h in centimeters of h is equal to 1.5 n plus 6. Okay, so that's our equation for this, uh, for the small cups. So what is our rate of change in this equation here? As you look at it, what is our slope or our rate of change? Very good. Nice job, Jane and Ramos. Nice job, Bridget. What is it going to be, guys? What is our rate of change or our slope in that equation? One and a half. Very good, Alyssa Button. Y equals mx plus b. And we remember that y equals mx plus b. m is our slope. It's the number that's attached to our letter. Our b is our y-intercept, that number that's all by itself. So our slope here, our rate of change is our 1.5. Our y-intercept, that number that's by itself is <laughs> That's okay, Diego. Um, so what is our B or our Y intercept, our initial height of the cups? Nice job, Bridget. Let me see in the chat. What are we thinking? I know Bridget's got it. Who else has got it? What are we thinking? What's our initial or our B, our Y intercept? Okay, so we're talking about this equation here, y equals 1.5n plus 6. So that plus 6 is going to be our y-intercept value. Where does it hit our y-axis? Our initial height of the cups. 6. Very good. Nice job, Elizabeth, and thank you. It's going to be 6. So if I want to graph this equation here, I want to graph this whole thing here, where am I going to start on my y-axis? If I grab a point, where am I going to start on my y-axis? Nice job, Bridget. Let's see, what are people thinking? Where am I going to start on my y-axis? But... Now we need to look at the equation though, Avery, because the, the equation doesn't say plus zero, it says plus six. So it's gonna start, nice job, um, Jaden Ramos and Kaylee B, it's gonna start on our y-axis at six. So first you need to take that number that's all by itself and that's where you start on your y-axis. Boom. And then this 1.5, Jaden, is going to come in when we want to extend our line. That 1.5 is our slope, right? Our rise over run, which we know our rise over our run is going to be, um, what is the, if I were to write this slope as a fraction, what would it be of rise over run? Nice job, Bridget. Nope, we're not looking at that. That six is the y-intercept. We're done with the y-intercept. The slope is the number that's attached to our letter. So it's going to be, our slope is going to be, what? Nice job, Jaden Ramos. Nice job, Avery. Nice job, Bridget. What is our slope going to be? It's our that value, that 1.5 over what? 1. Very good. Because it's a whole number, we're going to write that number over the number 1. Remember, we like to turn it into a fraction of rise over run because it makes it easier Two, very good, Kaylee B. We're going, it makes it easier when we go to graph it because we say to ourselves, I need to go up 1.5 and then over to the right one box. So if I want to extend this line, I have to go where? From this y intercept of six, I need to go up how much? 
One and a half. One and a half. So one and a half would take me halfway through this box here. And then I have to go over how many? One, very good. So let me tell you, we're done with the six. Once we plot the six here, we're done with it. We're using this slope of 1.5 over one. So for every one that I, 1.5 that I rise, I have to run it over one. We're done with the six. We rise it 1.5 and we run it one. Okay, so then I wanna extend my line one more time just to be sure. I'm gonna rise it up 1.5 and I'm gonna run it one. One way that we can test to make sure this, we can say to ourselves, one, if we wanna make it a whole number, we could say three, multiply by two, multiply by two, three over two, up three from six to nine to three is three over two would get us there. So now I'm going to connect my lines, my points using my line here. Boom. There we go. So we just plotted that first small cups equation. Now, we need to look at the large cups equation. First of all, when we look at and compare our small cups equation and our large cups equation, what is one thing that you notice? Anything at all, when you compare these two equations here, what do you notice? Nice job, Bridget. What do you notice? Take 10 more seconds to write in the chat one thing that you notice when you compare these two equations here. What do you notice? Maybe something that's the same, something that is different. They have the same slope. Okay, nice job. And you know what, Bridget and Jaden Ramos said the same thing. They have the same slope or rate of change. What do we notice is different here? Ooh, nice job. So the the so Tiana said the same thing. They both have that 1.5 n. Nice job, Tiana. Um, Kaylee B said for well for starters, they both have 1.5 for a slope. Yes, nice job, Kaylee B. Um, Tiana said that they're different because this first equation has a plus six of a y-intercept and the second one has a plus nine for a y-intercept. So if I was to plot the second equation, this large cup equation, where would I start on my y-axis this time? Very good, Bridget. Very good, Jaden Ramos. Yes. Yes, Kaylee B. Nice job. Let me know in the chat, where, where is it going to start this time? Last time we started at six because it said plus six. Now, where is this one going to start for our large cups? What do we think? Nice job, Avery. Yes. Very good, guys. This one is going to start at our plus nine because we have a y-intercept of plus nine. Nice job. And then Bridget said, so I'm going to wait, let me just put this point on here. So we would start at our nine on our axis here. Okay, you're going to put your point the best that you can. It's a little bit tricky. And then as Bridget said, we're going to go up 1.5 for every one second, or we could go up three for every two seconds that we go over. So if we go up three, so that would take us to the 12, we would go over two boxes and it would fall there. And then what would we do to those two points? Wait, okay. Oh, okay. So the reason that we
Okay, so let me, yes, before I connect them, Jane Remus, let me just do one thing to explain. So the reason that we start at this plus nine here, Alyssa button, is because um, in this equation, our plus is plus nine. So on our y axis, we're going to start at nine. And then the reason that I ran it over two and went up three is because it's kind of hard to go up one and a half boxes. So I multiplied both of these by two to get an equivalent fraction of three over two. So because we went, we had a scale here of three, I was like, hey, I want to try to do something to get this a nicer number. So I went up three and over two is equivalent. And then we're going to do exactly what Jaden said. We're going to connect those two points. So you line up your little line with that Y intercept, bring that red line through that point you just drew. And we're gonna look at these two equation lines here. What do we notice about these two equation lines here? And here's the thing, don't, when you're extending this red line here, don't, if, it, if these little purple dots pop up, don't like pull back until it's not, the purple dots go away, okay? So what do we notice about these, these two equation lines here? They're parallel. Okay. Alyssa Button thinks they're parallel. What do we think? Do we agree with Alyssa Button? Yes or no? Nice job, Jaden. Very good, Bridget. Very they don't good. Start at the origin. <laughs> what was it? They don't start at the origin. They both don't start at the origin. Yes, that's another good thing. Kaylee B said yes. They are they're not proportional. Good. Um, Avery said that she agrees. Good. They are parallel. So if we're talking about in the context of this story, when will these stacks have the same height? Will these cup will these stacks ever have the same height? Nice job. And I'm going to read that in one second, Kaylee B. Okay. Um, they, these two cups, these two stacks are never going to have the same height. Because they're parallel. When you have two lines here, that when we have two lines that are parallel, they're never going to touch. Those equations are, it's okay, Jane Ramos. This is a new, this is new learning, right? Um, when we have two equation lines that are parallel, they're never going to touch. They're going to have no solutions in common because to, in order to have solutions in common, they have to intersect, right? So because these lines are parallel, they're never going to touch. We're going to say that these have no solutions or they're never going to hit each other because they're parallel. And because they're parallel, that means they're never, ever, ever going to hit each other. The distance between them is always going to be three units. Okay. So let me tell you what you're doing for this afternoon's work. So this afternoon, you have a video attached to slide number seven. Okay. Slide number seven, you have a video where I go through what we did in class today. I like for like two seconds, I go through these two activities here. I go through these notes, which is really important in that video. I go through these notes, these three terms here. And then I help you go through slide eight, nine, 10. And we sort of like we always do, when you click on that video, it's going to take you through these ones together with me. I have timers going. I have you do some things independently, but we always are going to come back and go through things together. Okay. So you're going to use that video attached to seven to complete eight, nine, and 10. And then I made that video a little bit shorter. So once you finish that, I need you to give me 10 minutes on your path in Alex because we please don't leave yet because we have 60 minutes that are due by Friday. If you have questions for me, you can reach out to me right now or you can send an email. I'm gonna have a session this afternoon at 1.30 to if you have questions that you wanna ask me. Um, if you are all set, if you don't have any questions for me, you guys can head out to science and I will 